Today is going to be the most Long Islandy reading ever. Is that even like a word? <laughs> At the Crescent Club, because I'm meeting up with freaking Rosie O'Donnell, people. Rosie O'Donnell right here, reading me and her. Crescent Club. Long Island extra large is sitting right here. No time to cry, nothing to fear. It's Rosie O'Donnell, a little bit bigger than Teresa. What do you mean that's an insult? Don't call me fat. It's Teresa Caputo, Teresa Caputo show. Woo! She talks to dead people every day. She does it in a very, very Long Island way. She's Teresa, Long Island medium. How do you want your steak? Well, medium. It's <laughs> Teresa, the medium from Long Island. Kapow! My name's Rosie O'Donnell, and I'm an entertainer. I'm 54 years old. I grew up on Long Island, and I'm thrilled to be here. People know me for having a daily talk show and for talking about issues that matter, and sometimes that upset some people. I do watch Long Island Medium, mostly because my BFF, Jeannie, is very, very into it. <gasps> Teresa Caputo! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh. It's Rosie O'Donnell! Look at that! It's perfect! Wow, you are so buffed and tiny! How are you? Look at you! I was very excited. I, I felt like I was seeing an old high school friend. Like, oh, my God, we're going to go see Teresa Caputo! Rosie O'Donnell is here! <laughs> Spirits, I'm with Teresa Caputo! <laughs> And Janie Weedy, please show up. <laughs> oh, that works. Seeing Teresa Caputo, I was just feeling very, very high energy, kind of stressed out and nervous, but excited at the same time. OK, so um, you, have you ever been to a medium before? Yes, we've okay. been together and separate. And, and she's been to see you. I've seen you a couple times, but in oh, large forms oh, at like Westbury and things like oh, that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So you're familiar with on How I Read? Yeah. OK, so. Um, oh. So you, um, okay. So I want to talk about the mom that's departed. She told me for a long time, though. That's mine. Oh, your mom's gone for some time? Since 73. Your dad also departed as well? Yeah, just recently. Oh, because I'm like, who's hiding in the back? That's <laughs> quite accurate. <laughs> <laughs> They're telling him to sit down. You, they don't want him <laughs> the reading. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, it's. After that, he's hiding. He is doing his best to come through. But I do feel a shyness to your father. Yes. Because when he sits there, he pulls the hat over his eyes. When spirit does that, that's my symbol for that they were shy or they had a hard time expressing emotion. Was there a separation uh, between you and your dad? Because mm -hmm. he shows me like you sitting on a curb waiting for him and like him not showing up. I looked over at him and I caught him crying. Yeah. And I said to him, oh, I said, why, why are you crying? And he said, I just wish I was able to be there for my daughter when she really needed me. Mm. You know, these are the moments where I feel for a soul because he just doesn't know what to do. You know, and then, and then he looks at me and he's like, I just, I, I, did, I didn't know what to do. He says, I could barely pick up the pieces for myself. He says, and then I had to take care of a family. He says, and I didn't know how to do that. He said, I had no training in that. So know that your father wants to take this opportunity to say that he's sorry about that. He said, I did the best that I could. And it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. When I was 10 years old, my mom died of cancer. Actually, it was about five days before my 11th birthday. At the time, no one said the word cancer. It was 1973. So they told us that she had hepatitis. My father, I'm sure, was overwhelmed. There were five small children at home and a big Irish Catholic family. No one was talking about feelings. There's a big problem with alcohol in the family. And, you know, he went through a, a time of that. My life went uh, like in The Wizard of Oz, where all the color was sucked out of it. Like, you know, I felt kind of like I was living a normal life, and then all of a sudden, it was devoid of everything. So I think it's what every kid wants to know, that um, the wrongs that were done to them by the adults in charge, um, that they are, that they're regretful. So, um... You have, like, a mentor or somebody that departed? Yeah. Her name was Pat, but I always called her Teach the Peach. She made me feel like, though, that you still honor her every day. 
So whether you think of her, she pops into your head. She says, when you feel as though you're alone, know that you're not. The people in the neighborhood raised me. The next door neighbor's mother, she got me my first bra. And there was a teacher who came through with Teresa today, Pat Maravel. I used to call her Teach the Peach. And she was the first person to say I love you to me. She was the first person to hug me. She was the first person to kind of love me back to life. Um, your mother just said something to me. She said, you are so supportive of your children. Mm. She says, you respect your children's choices. And you've never tried to change them. She said, I want you to know that um, you are a great mom. She says, I'm so proud. I, I said to her, I'm not going to cry. It's going to be for you. And she's <laughs> like, you wait. I'm like, it's going to be you, Weenie. I've raised four teenagers, and now I have a new baby. And, you know, sometimes I don't know what to do, and I wish I had a mother to call to ask. And so that was a, a beautifully touching thing to hear. And as someone without parents that are living, um, it, it provided me with the kind of solace, I think. If I had chosen what I would want them to come through and say, it's exactly what happened. If I could have picked, you know, to have my mother say that she sees me parent, and to have my father say that he realizes the effects of his actions, you know. Those are the two things I think that uh, I've always wished, yeah. you know. So who's the young male that departed? My husband. OK. So know that he's stepping forward. Um, and you still have his wedding ring? Did you bring it with you? Because he's like, he goes, Teresa, you can't see it. She hid it from you. I did. It's in my pocket. Oh, <laughs> weenie. She and told I, me she had something oh, in her pocket. what a weenie. <laughs> yeah. We call her Jeannie and Weenie. She said she had something broken. in her pocket, but she didn't tell I me what it was. I can't wear it because it's broken in two. It broke a while Perfect. ago. Yeah, but I just stuck it in my pocket today. And you didn't know that? She didn't tell me. She said, I have something in I my pocket. I wouldn't tell her. My husband, Dan, was an angel. He was funny, he was kind, he was an incredible husband, an incredible father. Dan was diagnosed with a very rare form. Uh, it's a soft tissue cancer called synovial sarcoma. And he survived three years. He battled with everything he had. Never once did he complain. Because this diagnosis was also a childhood diagnosis, many children battle this disease, he said, I will never complain when I'm sitting in Sloan Kettering with children next to me. <laughs> 